hot topic of the year, I guess, is uh, LLM uh, code generation and specifically how that uh, reflects for Julia. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, today, I will give a short introduction to evaluate LLM synthesized Julia code. I'm Jun Kim from 01.ai. So let's first give a brief review of existing LLM code benchmarks. Uh, the first, uh, maybe the most popular one is Human Evolve. It contains 164 Python tasks. And another one is MBBP, uh, the name states mostly basic Python problems. And uh, we also have multiple E. It is a translation of uh, uh, above two problems into 18 programming language and also including Julia. And for some other tasks like a uh, single line filling, which is suitable for copilot related tasks, for meaning for code completion, and also repo bench and uh, SWE software engineer benchmark for real world GitHub related cases, and also live code benchmark. And today I will mainly focus on human evolve. And the, the left figure is the original prompt input to the language model in the Python world. So as you can see in the Python, the first uh, we have a function definition and then followed by a doc string. And uh, in human eval.gl, we all know that the doc string comes first and then the function signature. So I rearranged the order of uh, definition. So first we have a signature and then we have a task description and uh, then comes the example section. Uh, in the example section, I also added several uh, Ju Julia doc test cases. Uh, they are mainly coming from this section. So I just reorder it. And then we have a final signature. So this is a prompt input to the language model. So what makes human eval GL special? Of course, first, it is implemented by a human. That was me. And uh, I fixed some bugs in the Python version. The hum original human uh, eval contains several bugs. We all know that a human can make mistakes. And uh, several, uh, I added mo much more test cases. In the original Python version, we only have very uh, very limited number of test cases. And uh, in human eval.gl, I added the auto-generated many test cases from the eval plus. So the test cases increased from uh, less than 10 to about 10 or 100 times. Also, um, I rephrased the several tasks to make them more idiomatic in Julia. So including the famous one base indexing and also the event and all such cases. Also, as we can see from here, I added some extra type hint, type annotations, including the arguments and also the return of the function here. So I haven't do serious comparison, but in theory, it should help the language model to help understand the problem better. So is human eval.gl a good benchmark? <laughs> and here I plot the number of language models solved by each task. Um, and uh, here I use 25 language models I can access to. So the x-axis sort the number from the easiest to the hardest. So as the arrow indicates, um, the human involved are just still uh, the, the task in the human involved is distinguishable. Only the, uh, here uh, for the harder problems, here uh, there's a little cliff. So maybe we should add more harder tasks to this benchmark. Okay, uh, let's go to the evaluation result. So here. Uh, the so y-axis is the total uh, 25 language models I evaluated. 
and the axis is the pass rate at one. So uh, note that uh, Cloud 3.5 Sonic and the model Gemini are not included. So sorry, Google, so very anthropic, uh, because I cannot access them. Um, but um, the strongest model until now is GPT-4, and then followed by GPT-4 Turbo, and then GPT-4.0. Uh, the strongest open source model we can access to now is the DeepSeek Code V2 Instruct. This uh, model, uh, I think it was released about several weeks ago. And in the original paper, it also add the evaluation result on of the junior programming language in the report. And it claims that uh, it is better than GPT-4 Turbo, which is here, and 69.8. And the result from the original paper says its model is 72. So uh, slightly better than GPT-4 Turbo, but based on my test, uh, actually, it is still, there's still a gap about 2 or 3% compared to GPT-4 Turbo. Um, three fun facts. First, uh, although DeepSeq code V2 was trained uh, with extra, I remember, maybe six tetabyte teta tokens compared to GP2, uh, compared to DeepSeq V2 chat, but the performance gain is only very little. Maybe DeepSeq can consider improve their, improve their training strategy. Uh, second, um, the model with large models with much more activated uh, parameters is not always result to a better performance. For example, the uh, ELARGE <laughs> and uh, unfortunately also Q1.5. Um, the performance is not that very well, but let's wait and see. In we will have a much stronger model soon in. The maybe in the next month, and I hopefully they will uh, be much better, even better than deep secret code of it. You and uh, the third one is that as human, um, actually the pass rate is not that high, especially considering the pass rate at one, um, because I recorded my own pass rate here, and it's only about zero point five. So. Mm, language models is much better than me, if considering only pass rate one. A uh, quick test here: I plot the top twenty tokens from human evolved solutions. One of them is from myself solution, and another one is from GP40. Can anyone tell which one is from me and which one is from GP40? <laughs> Oh, uh, pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> so, how did you tell? <laughs> oh, cool, pretty cool. <laughs> you got it, yeah. So, a closer look into AM's performance is that um, large language model are very like explainer code snippets, and sometimes it's very verbose, to my opinion. And uh, one thing that surprised me is that the language models are, are very good at dot broadcasting related operators. And uh, also, the stronger the model and the less uh, heuristication, as this means, usually means less stupid Python like grammar errors. Okay. Yeah. And uh, also, we, uh, deep if we look into uh, the language models, I'm not good at such cases, some corner cases, I think. So we may need some interactive evaluation later. Okay, the last slides, the challenges. Uh, first, we need more practical benchmarks, like uh, Junior IAM and Leadboard. And uh, a second one, if we want to turn from online evaluation to offline evaluation, we still need to uh, rely on the Python side uh, infrastructure. And the third, um, from code snippet to e evaluation to repository level evaluation, we need more work. Currently, 
human eval dot gl relies on test items, and but if we want to move to the repository level generation and evaluation, then we need much more uh, better infrastructure. Okay, thank you. This is my slide today. Thank you, Junjie. We have one one question time. It had, oh, okay, so um, when we are using Julia, we are mainly focused about its uh, like uh, package, like uh, differential equation dot gl, jump dot yeah. gl. So my question is the uh, like human evil dot gl support like uh, uh, how to evaluation the usage of package. Uh, unfortunately, no. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, okay. like I said before, um, it mainly focus on small task and the code snip to evaluate the performance on some very general tasks, so not like differential equation specific.